Hi there, Clueless Mike here. Today we're going to be talking about Codex Supplement Space Wolves. Uh, but you see we've got a nice power boost and a nice flavour boost as well. Uh, so starting off with number one, I'm going to talk about successor chapters. This is really weird because Space Wolves traditionally didn't have any successor chapters. I believe if my lore or memory is correct, they made one back in the day and the mutation all ran out of control and they didn't make any more since. But due to the magic of Belisarius Core, you can now have Space Wolves successor chapters. Rules wise, that means just like other chapters from the Space Marines, you can name yourself a successor and get access to more or less all of their rules, all their stratagems, some of their relics, their warlord traits. You don't get their special characters and and such, but you get access to a whole lot of stuff, and you don't need to stick wolf tail talismans all over your models when you do so. Number two, we're going to talk about sagas, which are quite a flavorful thing for the space wolves and something that marks them out as different to the other chapters. Um, so sagas are kind of like their warlord traits, but they've done them slightly different to last edition. So now you take a warlord trait, and each warlord trait has a specific saga associated with it. Um, and when you complete that saga, things like killing a, a monstrous creature, killing a vehicle, slaying another character in combat, uh, getting to combat, some of them are quite simple to do, you then activate an aura power that goes around you. Uh, they used to be a little less flavorful in that you'd get, say, plus one attack, as your warlord trait and then when you complete your saga that would just become a, an aura around you whereas now the auras are kind of like related to the um, warlord trait you get but they're not just a distinct it pops out and has the same effect on all the models around you and they just are a bit more interesting in that regard there's also a specific um, stratagem that's associated with them uh, that when one of your characters completes um, one of the conditions for a saga on the table. You can spend a command point and just give them the warlord trait bonus, uh, which is quite cool. So if one of your characters happens to slay a giant monster, you can quickly spend a CP and he gets a, an aura to help slay other giant monsters around him. Number three, well, we're going to talk about the relics from the Space Wolf supplement. Uh, so Space Wolves have had a few relics that they've always relied upon, and that is still the case here. Uh, the Armour of Russ has um, been improved. Um, it now gives a 2 plus save, a 4 up invulnerable save, and it forces whoever's next to you in close combat to strike after all other eligible models have done so. The wording is slightly changed. It basically means strike last, uh, but the way the wording is um, done, it means that they can't even spend the two points to interrupt either, so it's been made slightly better in that regard. Uh, the Wolf and Stone is still good, it doesn't give plus one attack to all the models around it anymore, but it's got a once per game aura bonus, and it also gives, he looks down at his notes, reroll charge aura. A uh, really powerful effect to have in a close combat army. And the last uh, of the relics that's really good, I think, is the Pelt of the Bane Wolf. Uh, you get minus one to be hit and minus one to be wounded, which is really powerful effect and really stacks with other things like storm shields and such. So excellent relics, as always, from the Space Wolves. Number four is psychic powers. They haven't changed a lot, and that's a good thing. Uh, Space Wolves Ward has lots of good buffing powers and lots of malediction powers, stuff that debuffs the enemy. Uh, things like they can give the enemy, they can choose an enemy unit to give minus one to hit. Uh, there's an aura power they can cast. Um, that means that all units nearby count as being in cover, which is really powerful. Um, and they can uh, do one that, that makes the enemy fight last. This is something the Games Workshop seems to be really pushing with the these early codexes, the Necrons have them, um, Death Watch have got some, there's some in the Space Marine book, uh, forcing enemy units to fight last, which is a massive um, influence on the combat phase. Uh, so more of that here for the Space Wolves. Number five, secondary objectives. So similar to the Space Marine book and the Necron book, they've put another four uh, secondary objectives in here for the Space Wolves to choose. And I'm slightly concerned about these. Um, when they first came out, the Space Room ones were okay, the Necron ones were okay. These ones are a lot better. I mean, there's four here, and three of them are very usable. Uh, there's one that gives you victory points each turn for killing characters and killing vehicles. You get victory points for doing either of those. And even if you don't kill vehicles in turn, you still gain some victory points just for wounding them. That seems really easy to do if your enemy's got some. Uh, there's another one uh, where you name an enemy character and you name one of your characters. 
And if you kill that character with anything, you get five victory points. If you kill it in close combat, you get 10. And if your character you name killed it, you get 15. I mean, if you go for that, that seems a, a reasonably easy 10 victory points to get by just doing what you want. Um, and then the last one, Warrior's Pride, just seems a bit a bit too easy for me. Um, you get three victory points a turn if you have two units or an engagement range of the enemy. That's that's really simple for a close combat army on smaller tables or an army that wants to get forwards. Uh, that seems to be you'll get that more or less every turn without doing any work for it. So slightly concerned about those going forwards and there are rumours and rumblings around that some of the bigger tournaments won't allow them at the moment until more codexes are out so that all armies are playing with an extra set of the uh, victory conditions. Uh, moving on to units. So number six, I'm going to talk about the few bad units that are coming here, or maybe not bad, but certainly worse than they were. So the highlight of this is the poor Wolfen. They have been hit by the nerf bat, as Warhammer players like to call it. Uh, they've lost their feel no pain. Uh, they didn't gain an additional wound, similar to Mike and I have discussed in the past. Sanguinary Guard didn't gain one. The Wolfen didn't gain one. Uh, what else did the poor Wolfen lose? Um, they lost the field of pain. Uh, they can't attack twice anymore with their ability. Uh, their ability to strike after they die only kicks in if they haven't already fought that round. Uh, Storm Shields, they used to get a 4 up normal save and a 3 plus invulnerable save. The Storm Shield has swapped around so it now gives them a 4 up invulnerable save and a 3 up normal save. Much, much worse. They have picked up a toughness, um, but overall they are just a lot worse than they were. Their thunder hammers are worse in combat. It's just just all bad for Wolfen, and I struggle to see them coming onto the table. Uh, other units that are worth mentioning in this bit is Ragnar Blackmane. Still an absolute beast if you look at his stat line and stuff, but he's still crippled by the same thing of He's a foot warrior with no extra movement or anything. But the main thing that's changed to him is none of his auras affect him anymore. So Ragnar Blackmane puts out three different auras, but they only affect core units, so don't affect himself. Uh, also, there are various old Space War stratagems uh, that really powered him up. They're really designed to power up a character. One of them can't, can't double his attacks, uh, but they're not available to him anymore. So his individual power has dropped quite significantly. Number seven, I'm going to talk about Swift Hunters. So Swift Hunters is a new special rule that applies to all cavalry and beast models in the Space Wolf Codex, and it allows you to advance and charge in the same turn. This is a really powerful ability, usually seen on kind of really fast races like Harlequins and such, and it applies in the Space Wolf Army mainly to the Thunderwolves. Uh, these are models that many people have, and they're great looking models, or most of them are. And they are now beasts. They've got their new Storm Shields to give them two up save. Uh, they used to be susceptible to small arms fire, uh, but now they're not so much. Uh, they gained an additional wound. They've got nice weapon choices. Uh, they are just all round brilliant with this. It adds to their mobility a lot. Um, and there's a couple of stratagems that well, as well that affect them. Uh, there's one called Pack Hunters that if they charge a unit that's already engaged with something else, uh, they get to add an extra D6 to their charge roll. Um, and they get to re-roll all wound rolls that turn with their teeth and claws and such. Uh, they're just such a good unit now, including things like Harold Deathwolf. He gains it as well, and he's really beastly also. So I think you're going to see a lot of Thunderwolf lists hit the table. Um, also to mention in that little bit is that the Great Wolf himself... Um, Logan, Logan Grimnir, if you mount him on Stormrider, which is his Santa sleigh, he gets the Swift Hunter's Rule as well, because it's pulled by um, wolves, um, and that gives him loads of extra ability, and he's actually really takeable now. Uh, pains me to say so, because I really dislike the model, but some people out there like it, and is now going to be seen on the table, I suspect, because he's a chapter master, and he can put out 18 attacks, that's no buffs, he can put out 18 attacks around, and he's got 14 wounds, 4 up in vulnerable save. Really good model now. Number 8, a new unit, the Hounds of Morkai. Now, let's not be around the bush. These are a unit of Primaris Reavers with a Space Wolf upgrade sprue just thrown in the box. Um, they look pretty similar to Reavers. If you've already got Reavers, 
you could use those as well, stick a little talisman around their neck. Uh, they're an anti-psyker unit. I think they've got a bit more use than Reavers do. If you're playing against psychers, they're actually really good. Uh, they get to shrug off mortal wounds in the psychic phase. They give out an aura um, that reduces the uh, psychic role for enemy psychers. But I think their best ability is they can target enemy character psychers um, with their shooting attacks and they get plus one to wound and they deal plus one damage. Um, that's a really powerful ability. They've only got pistols, but they're heavy bolt pistols. They've got a minus two AP, and they're now doing two damage. So if you can get close to a um, Psyker, then they can actually do a pretty good job on them. Uh, so they're worth noting, as they're a brand new unit in the Codex, hasn't been available before. Number nine, the Blood Claws. Now, Blood Claws are the kind of like the scout equivalent um, of the young space marines for the space wolves. Uh, that's where they stick them in the packs of um, blood claws and send them into combat. Uh, they're a troop choice and they're a really good troop choice. They've picked up the additional wound, they've picked up the Astartes chain sword, um, they can still be taken in massive squads of at least up to 15 and they can have a wolf guard pack leader leading them who you can give all kinds of weapons to, you can give him terminator armour if you want. Um, they get plus one um, additional attack on the charge when they charge in uh, they've got a couple of downsides in that they have to attempt to charge the closest unit and such, uh, but overall they're a cheap unit, certainly for a Space Marine troop unit, and they're better in combat than a Primaris Intercessor, who are pretty darn good in close combat. Uh, so I think you'll be seeing lots of Blood Claws as uh, the Space Wolf unit, um, a troop unit choice on the table. They've just got loads of upside to them. Okay, lastly, number 10, and this may seem a little out of left field, but I'm going with Fenrisian Wolves. Now these are something that are quite unique to Space Wolves. They're a cheap, fast horde unit. I think a Fenrisian Wolf costs seven points a model. Um, it moves pretty fast. It's got two attacks each. It does minus one AP on its attacks. Um, they're not particularly tough, um, but you can field them in a big unit of them and it gives Space Marines something that, or Space Wolves something that no other Space Marine has, which is a cheap, highly mobile screen. You can use it to control areas of the table. There are various ways to buff them up with some of the Thunderwolf characters. They're just gonna be a really strong unit if you can field them. And they'll be something that you just don't see anywhere else in Space Marines. And they'll give those Space Wolf players an extra dimension to their play. So I think you'll see quite a lot of those on the table as well. And that was my top 10 things from the Space Wolf supplement. In the comments below, what do you think is the most interesting thing to come out of this? And what do you think you'll see in future supplements? I know I'm looking forward to the Blood Angel one. A month to go, and here's hoping it's going to be a good one. If you enjoyed what you'd seen, why don't you come check us out on modelingforadvantage.co.uk. There's loads of different ways you can support the channel over there, including merch, that kind of stuff. Thank mm -hmm. you.